Jeremy Thake, VP of Product Technology here at Hyperfish. Now I wrote a blog post recently on why I think that the future of Microsoft collaboration is Microsoft Teams. Uh, Microsoft Teams has been in preview now since November. We've been able to play with this technology with inside of Office 365 um, by just enabling a little switch inside of your administration console in Office 365. Uh, we've been playing with it both in a Hyperfish role um, within our team, but also in pilot environments that have been working to do demonstrations with customers to show the power of Microsoft Teams. Now, what's interesting about Microsoft Teams is that it's actually built on the premises and foundations of Office 365 groups, or you're seeing Microsoft calling it now groups in Outlook. Now, what I mean by this is the, uh, the team of Active Directory, the group that did Office 365 groups in Exchange, because that's where it's living, is inside of Outlook, kind of have decided to um, increase the offering of groups by allowing the Microsoft Teams to plug into it. So right now, when you go into Outlook, you can go and see all your groups on your, uh, your left-hand side in your navigation. And it allows you to kind of go create new groups or join existing ones or collaborate in ones that you're already a member of based on Active Directory permissions. Now, as I add myself to more groups, under the covers, that is all being managed by Active Directory groups. The benefit of an Office 365 group is that essentially not only do I get the ability to start a conversation either directly in Outlook or in the user interface in the web browser, um, much like you would an email, but I also have within the same membership kind of group container the ability to collaborate on documents that live within OneDrive for Business or go and create a plan that lives in Planner that only the members of that group can contribute towards the boards and the plans and the tasks that go inside of them. In addition to that, there's a OneNote shared notebook and there's also this um, notion of having connectors that allow you to do things like when a tweet, I meaning this certain criteria comes in, automatically post it into your Office 365 group conversation. Now this construct of kind of like ring fencing all those different services that exist within Office 365, um, but specifically for that group of collaborators, is really compelling. It's something that we've been familiar with both in SharePoint team site world, um, inside of Yammer groups, um, as well as just in kind of just collaboration within side of file shares where you would just have folders that have security for individual groups as well. Now what Teams has done is taking that evolution of considering this container with membership of groups and the different services and extending it even further. So for instance, now with Microsoft Teams, you can go into the teams.microsoft.com website. Again, you have to enable this in your Office 365 subscription. You can either work with it in the browser or in a direct app that works on a Mac, works on PC, Windows, and also works inside of Android, iOS, or Windows Phone. Now, in my personal opinion, the user experience of the mobile apps is way beyond my expectations of a Microsoft preview technology, um, especially um, when it's only been started to be made available in November. Once you're in that uh, Teams experience, you can go, again, create Teams, you can join existing Teams, or you can look at Teams that you've been added to automatically because it's all using that same Outlook Groups um, configuration under the covers. Now what teams give you that's a little bit better and bigger than Office uh, 365 groups, groups within Outlook, is that I can actually have Skype for business calls. I can tra tr trigger meetings with the, the members of that team, um, both voice and video, and obviously all the other features you get for Skype for business, like sharing your desktop and sharing presentations. But I can also do things such as add bots, chat bots, conversational bots into my Microsoft Teams experience. So we're really kind of looking at where groups started out as this construct of where my teams would live, but moving me into a new presentation layer, which is Microsoft Teams. Now you've noticed probably that Outlook Groups hasn't had much love in the last six months in terms of user experience. Uh, there has been a lot of investment to get both Yammer Groups available in first release, which they've just announced. They're starting to roll this out to make it genuinely available now inside of Office 365 Groups and also with SharePoint sites as well. Now the notion there is, is that I may be used to using Yammer conversations, which is more Facebook friendly way of users kind of posting a status and other people responding and liking and linking to things in that kind of conversational flow activity feed that you see in social networking tools. And this is really the enterprise social networking tool that Microsoft push. 
Now with SharePoint, on the other hand, it's more about, well, we already had OneDrive for Business integration with groups and teams, but now with um, Office 365 groups having SharePoint site for support, it means you can do things like have custom lists and have more complex document libraries that support things like document types and versioning and so forth that you don't get with the OneDrive for Business that was part of Office 365 groups nat natively, which is called like files within that user interface. So there's a big kind of mash right now of, you know, do I pick Yammer, do I pick um, Office 365 groups, or do I pick Teams? Now in this blog post that I've just written, um, and future ones I'll be talking about is how we decide within, within an organization which way we go. Microsoft's kind of main pitch right now is that um, if you are looking for something that is mass communication across your entire organization, you should be using Yammer. If you are doing something that is for uh, team working groups, then you should be using Teams. And the reason for that is Teams right now has a limit of 600 members only. Now we know that it's built on top of Office 365 groups, which has a limit a lot higher than 600. So we can expect that number to go up once it comes out of preview, I would imagine. And then in addition to that, uh, we have SharePoint, which is for kind of heavy document collaboration where you're going to be using versions and manage metadata across your documents and have some kind of business processes in play. But the beauty is, and this is my prediction, is because Microsoft Teams now spans all of those things, whether it's Yammer conversations that can be kind of accessed and can be created as part of that group that Teams creates, whether it's um, your group's conversations that are happening um, that can be accessed within Teams as well through the tabs interface that comes in Teams, or whether it's SharePoint sites that right now all you can get at is a team document folder inside of Teams, but eventually you can imagine that maybe there will be the ability to have a custom list be a tab within Teams, or maybe we could have um, a SharePoint modern page be the home page to a Microsoft Teams in that front end. So I think the user experience, because the platform is available across all these things, is definitely a great way for Microsoft to go. Now it might not go that way for a variety of reasons. The first reason really is, is that, and, and as an experienced person inside Microsoft, I've seen this a lot, is that there's engineering teams that report up through different lines within Microsoft and they all have their own objectives and goals about their particular products. Now from an outside world, we see Office 365 and think everyone's on the same uh, remit. But when you look at things like SharePoint news feeds and Yammer, and then you look at Office 365 groups, there was a lot of similarities in those products. And it wasn't always clear when to use one over the other. Now Microsoft's answer to this was, well, there's lots of choice. And uh, it's good things that we have choice. My experience is, is with, all, with users within organization, you need to keep things simple. I think there's a big fear within organizations that there's more than one place uh, for people to look now if they have Yammer, Groups, Teams, SharePoint, where documents could be stored, let alone OneDrive uh, for Business Personal or OneDrive for Business from a Teams perspective as well. So there's a lot of risk associated with that. But I think because there's these engineering teams within Microsoft, that are working on their own things and making sure that their products within Office 365 get their usage up. I think if Teams was decided to be that front end, that presentation layer, the user experience that all of these things plug up into, um, usage is gonna be harder for them than if, say for instance, SharePoint mobile app, which exists in the market right now, is the front end that's used um, for, for users. Now maybe that does make sense. Maybe your intranet in a box for SharePoint Mobile is your app there. And maybe when you're doing team collaboration, which is different from the internet because internets really are defined as being more kind of corporate wide or department wide, more of the corporation pushing to employees. Whereas team collaboration is more about everybody contributing to the content inside that container. And so therefore that's where Microsoft Teams or groups would come in. Now Yammer has a mobile app as well. So I think in the next year, years to come, we'll start to see how these different platforms and different front ends that exist within inside of Office 365 start to get sharper focuses on exactly what they're gonna do for you as a user and how these interlink together. In an ideal world, there'd be one app that you would access that would access Teams and it would access SharePoint and it would access Yammer 
Um, but I feel because of the nature of the way that Microsoft is structured or organizationally internally, with kind of Yammer being you know different kind of space to where Exchange is that owns Outlook and obviously uh, on the client and on the server, um, and then also where the SharePoint team are with the OneDrive team, that you know this is going to really take a little bit of time for all those uh, kinks to iron out to make the user experience seamless across everything that's in Office 365. So hopefully that's useful. Uh, we're going to be putting up a bunch of posts coming up and I'll be video blogging these as well. Um, give us your feedback in the comments on YouTube or on the Medium post where we're publishing all of our Hyperfish stuff at blogs.hyperfish.com.